Okay, so this is the cooling arrangement with the table leg pipes welded to those box sections like I showed in the previous video. Now, um, I do these videos this way actually for a couple of reasons. I mean, one of them is um, I think it makes it more understandable if it's broken down into bits. Each bit is demonstrated, it's put together, and you can see the thing grow. I think it helps understand how the actual machine works. But uh, perhaps more importantly from my side is um, the comments on this channel I think are really valuable and really well worth reading. Now, I obviously read all of the comments and I get a lot of help from the comments that perhaps people don't realise. So I read through those comments and I get a tremendous amount of help. There's a really good example right here. A couple of people posted that there might be a problem as the hot gas comes in the top here, cools, comes down here to the bottom and exits here. And there's a very good chance of condensation forming. Uh, that didn't occur to me, actually. I wasn't going to do this because I was just going to do that and then hope for the best. But a couple of people said, well, what you want to do is you put, want to put a condensation trap in. I thought, that's a really clever idea. So I bought a uh, glass water bottle with a stainless steel top. There it is. Drilled a hole in the bottom and welded the stainless steel top onto the bottom so that that glass bottle, which has a rubber seal, can screw in there and be a condensation trap and I can see where the condensation is forming and to what degree it is forming, whether I need to empty the trap or not. And that will prevent me getting a lock. These incidentally are just legs to hold it off the ground. The main cooling area is here, the condensation trap is there. And that, like everything else, just slots onto the main machine. So let's slot it on. And there is our cooling unit slotted in with this pipe just slotting into the top of the second stage filter. Now, although we've kept that pipe run to a minimum, I mean, really, it just comes up straight up here and into the cooler, uh, it is still a pipe run, and we have a downdraft gasifier. So the syngas won't naturally want to go through this area because it's an area of resistance. What it'll want to do is just come out straight out the top of the gasification unit. What we need to do is give it a bit of an assist to create a downdraft here and to pull the syngas through this section here. That assist is in fact a blower unit, and the blower unit goes on here, where the gas exits. So the next piece that goes on is the blower unit to give that gas an assist to move through the pipework and to create the downdraft in the actual gasifier unit itself. Now it's a relatively simple task, we need to get a blower and a 12 volt battery. The blower only runs to begin the machine operating. Once it's operating and attached to the engine, the engine vacuum is sufficient to keep the syngas flowing through this system. So we only need the blower just to start the system up, and that would be best from a 12 volt battery. So I need a 12 volt blower, 12 volt battery, an on off switch, and the blower unit attached to here, and then we're straight to our, gener uh, to our uh, motor. Now, a lot of people have uh, obviously given really good advice again, and I'm a bit worried about my welds, because obviously I've been welding for about a week, a week and a half, so I'm pretty sure these are not gas-tight welds. I'm also pretty sure if I tried to make them gas-tight welds, all I would end up doing is burning through this really thin pipe. So all I've done is put spot welds on here to hold everything in place, and my plan is to get gun gum and put gun gum all around those seals. Now, gun gum is a material that's used in automotive exhausts. It's gas impermeable and it's rock hard once it sets. So we're going to put some gun gum on there and set it to use it as a gas seal around these joints because I'm not convinced my welding is really up to those joints. Now here we've taken on board the thing about the condensation trap and other people have made good ideas, or rather good suggestions. And one of them was, um, we don't really need all of this, what we could do is just have a bucket of water Exit the gas into the water, it will clean and cool it and act as a flame arrestor all at the same time. Now, it's not in the FEMA book, and I'm following the FEMA book, and I'm not 100% convinced it will do all of that job, but I do like the idea. So, at this stage here, where we've got the gas exit from the cooling, it might be an idea to put a bubbler unit, because the bubble unit would do a final clean, and it would act as a flame arrestor if that is something that concerns you. Me, I'm just going to put the blower on, because... That's what everybody else is doing, and that's what FEMA recommends. But a nice thing to add here would be a bubbler unit. So we only have two tasks to do. 
that is make the seals for these units which is just going to be silicon seals add the blower unit here which is basically a blower 12 volt battery and an on off switch and then this thing is ready to fire up and to see if we can run a generator with it so I thought um, we were getting on there we're getting quite near the finished I'm loving the look of it I hope you are too and thank you very much for watching the videos